My name is Dr. Adam Harmon. I am a cardiothoracic surgeon and I practice at Sequoia Hospital in Redwood City along with my partner, Dr. Luis Castro. And we do all aspects of adult acquired cardiac surgery. That includes valvular heart surgery and surgery on the arteries of people's hearts. Coronary artery disease has many names. Some people will say hardening of the arteries, others might say atherosclerosis. Essentially, coronary artery disease is a representation of total body disease that can involve the arteries that go to the brain, that can involve the arteries that go to the legs, and when it involves the arteries that go to the heart, we call it coronary artery disease, or CAD. If the uh, disease causes blockage in the arteries that go to the brain, a stroke or a mini stroke can occur. If the disease causes blockages in the arteries that go to the legs, frequently cramping can occur and it prevents people from being able to take long walks or exercise extensively. If the blockages, however, are in the arteries of the heart, frequently people will develop a syndrome called angina or angina, and this can lead to a heart attack. Very frequently, this is represented by substernal chest pain. Many patients have atypical forms of angina. It can be represented by pain going down the left arm. Infrequently, people might have pain in their abdomens or nausea and vomiting. There's a variety of different ways this can present. And most dangerously, some patients never feel any pain when they have blockages in the arteries of the heart. People often want to know why they've been afflicted with coronary artery disease or atherosclerosis. And the fact of the matter is that most human beings will get some form of occlusive arterial disease in their lifetime. There are risk factors as to why people will get it earlier in life, and there are risk factors as to why people will have it affect their hearts. Some of these things you can do something about. Others, unfortunately, you can't. You can't pick your parents. Some of this is simply a factor of genetics. There are things, however, that you can affect. For example, cigarette smoking, high stress, so too is a poor diet that affects the level of cholesterol. Certainly, control of diet and medical therapies can help to lower cholesterol levels. Diabetes, another very powerful uh, comorbidity associated with coronary artery disease. You may not be able to control whether or not you get diabetes, but certainly you can affect the severity by monitoring your weight, controlling any degree of morbid obesity, and certainly at least mitigating the circumstances with diabetes by having it well controlled. The diagnosis of coronary artery disease can sometimes be a little bit difficult because it can be atypical. The diagnosis begins with a good history and physical examination. This ultimately will lead, if the index of suspicion is high enough, to non-invasive testing first, which may ultimately lead to more invasive testing. The diagnosis can partially be made with routine EKG or electrocardiogram, and ultimately stress testing, where a specialized doctor, a cardiologist, might have a patient go on a treadmill and either do an EKG during that period or an echocardiogram during that period to see if there are any specific changes that we're looking for. Should these tests prove positive, then it may in fact lead to an angiogram. An angiogram, which is also called a cardiac catheterization, is also done by a highly specialized cardiologist. And that is a test where a tube is placed in the artery in your leg usually, and a dye is injected into the heart to give us a road map of the arteries of the heart to, in fact, prove whether or not there are blockages present or if there are not blockages present.